Where did the compound that's used for aspirin today come from? Aspirin and painkillers, where'd they come from? Wintergreen essential oil. The compound in wintergreen oil was actually remade chemically, and that's to what today's aspirin is. Isn't that crazy? Hey everybody, Dr. Josh Axe here. Welcome to my podcast. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to heal your body with essential oils. And essential oils are such a popular topic. It's a topic I love to discuss. So on this show, I'm gonna talk about how to use essential oils, when not to use essential oils, some of the, uh, you know, maybe the dangers if you're using them internally with certain or certain types of oils. I'll get into essential oils. I actually mentioned pregnancy. I'll talk about the best essential oils for gut health for thyroid health, for candida, for adrenals, for brain, for autoimmune disease, for Lyme disease, all kinds of things I'll be touching on uh, on today's broadcast. So anyways, really excited to talk about essential oils. And hey, if you're a first time listener here, just wanna welcome you here to the podcast and also say, hey, make sure to subscribe here uh, to the podcast. And hey, once you listen, hey, please go on iTunes here, leave a review, would love to hear from you. Uh, here as well. All right, let's dive right in. Let's talk about the power of essential oils and what essential oils are best for what conditions. We'll get into internal use. Should you use them internally? Shouldn't you? I'm going to cover all of those most popular topics on today's podcast. To start though, I always like to hit on how essential oils have been used throughout history and essential oils uh, have been used for really thousands of years. I mean, they were used by the Greeks the Jews, probably first by the Egyptians. They were used in Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine. And so, you know, essential oils have, have been around for a long time. Now, in terms of how essential oils are processed, uh, they tend to be processed in several ways. Now, most common ways, diffusion today, that's essentially, so when they make an essential oil, they're kind of letting, uh, they're letting heat rise through it, essentially steam, and it really separates the fat-soluble compounds from the water-soluble compounds. So an essential oil, it's all fat-soluble compounds that are really, really small and light. So when you think about a fat like olive oil or coconut oil, the oils that are in an essential oil might be about 100 to 1,000 times smaller, which they're so light and small, they can actually float through the air. So actually, if you walk into a house and you smell certain things, let's say you're smelling... Um, you know, peppermint or cinnamon or ginger, what you're actually smelling are the essential oils or those aromatic compounds that are released from a plant. If you walk up to a flower, you know, if you ever walk up and smell like a rose garden or, or smell jasmine, what you're actually smelling is the essential oil. So essential oils are very unique and in, in how they're used as compounds. And so again, they've been used throughout history. If you read the Bible, Essential oils are referenced more than 300 times, okay, or the compounds essential oils come from. So we know, uh, you know, lavender uh, or actually spikenard specifically, which is very similar to lavender is referenced there. You know, the first time I ever heard of essential oil, and this might have been you growing up, uh, in the Bible there's a story and it's the three wise men or magi bring the infant Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So frankincense and myrrh for a good part of my life, I didn't know that what that was until I started studying natural medicine and essential oils. And I came to find out frankincense and myrrh are these sort of resin they take from trees that are often either pressed or diffused, which is what essential oils are made out of. So frankincense and myrrh, probably the two most widely referenced and used essential oils really throughout a good part of history, mostly in, in Middle Eastern medicine but also even in Ayurvedic medicine, they were used very frequently as well. Frankincense was known to reduce inflammation. Uh, myrrh was known to really support the immune system and hormonal systems. And so again, you know, they, they've been referenced and used throughout history, and they're so powerful. I wanna talk about when they really started becoming popular though, again, and now throughout history, they were used during the bubonic plague. In fact, there's a story called The Four Thieves, and it's all about these thieves uh, in, in Europe um, were, uh, there was a, a plague going on and these four thieves were going around. All these people were dying. And so they were robbing them once they were dead. They were grave robbers. And the king brings them in and says, hey, you've been stealing from these, you guys should be infected. How are you not infected? 
And they, they shared with them, they had this formula they used because they were spice traders that they used a blend of, and now the, you know, the, the, the story has several references for the exact oils, but most commonly they reference oils like uh, eucalyptus oil, uh, lemon oil, clove oil, uh, as often referenced, um, you know, so, so there are many, rosemary oil, so there are lots of different oils that are referenced there. But anyways, these oils, especially oils like clove and eucalyptus, have these really powerful antimicrobial properties which fight off viruses and infections. And so they said that's what saved them. So again, that's one of the most popular stories about essential oils throughout history. And then in 1928, a French chemist, his name was Rene Maurice Gatofase, and he had a serious burn on his arm. He actually had a chemical burn, and he was uh, using essential oils like lavender. He went and took his arm and actually soaked it in lavender oil continuously. And he said after what should have been a third degree permanent scar, serious scar all over his arm, he said he had no remnants of a burn after soaking his arm in this lavender oil. And so lavender oils have been used throughout history for many things, for the immune system, for fighting infections, for improving mood. They've been used, as I meant, to heal burns. So there are so many references and benefits of essential oil. I'm going to really dive into which essential oils are most beneficial for which condition, whether it be reducing inflammation, getting rid of chronic pain, healing your hormones. So we're going to go ahead and dive into all that here in just a second. Here's a few things that I want to mention in terms of studies about essential oils. Listen to this. So studies today or, or today even modern medicine is starting to use essential oils. So in 2009, a study was done in hospitals, and they found that patients that used essential oils like citrus oils and lavender were significantly less anxious uh, than other people who were going into surgery. And they specifically used neroli oil and lavender essential oil. So again, in a 2019 huge medical study, they found that lavender and citrus oils reduce anxiety significantly. Another study was found, now this was a study done in 2007 out of the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine. What they found is, is that women who used essential oils during labor were able to use fewer medications and had less discomfort. Another study done in 2016 found that aromatherapy can successfully treat and reduce chronic pain. So whether it's neck pain or low back pain, or pain after surgery, essential oils were effective. So obviously there are loads and loads of benefits as we're talking about the many benefits of essential oils. So let me touch on again, essential oils are really extracted several ways. One is, again, steam rises through them. That's distillation. Another way though, and this is the way a lot of modern essential oils are now being used, especially oils that are gonna be used internally, and there's something called CO2 extraction. It's a high pressure process. So think about if you ever use a, uh, a, a pressure cooker at home, you're pressurizing something. You can use high degrees of pressure to separate the fat and water soluble compounds. But again, CO2 extraction is a way essential oils are used and they're typically better uh, for, for internal use than a lot of regular essential oils in many cases. And then there's also extraction, which is like where you're pressing something. So think about olive oil you're taking olives and pressing them, oils coming out. That's how they make actually citrus oil. So uh, lemon oil, uh, orange essential oil, grapefruit essential oil, or bergamot oil, those are actually not from the flesh. They're from taking an orange peel, pressing it just like you would olive oil and getting the oils out that way. So that's how these oils are typically made uh, there as well. And most essential oils are about a 10 to even a 70 times concentration than you'd find in, a, in the actual food or the actual plant. Now, here is something that's really controversial I'm gonna share with you. There are two views about essential oils. There's a group of people, and this is actually kind of a debate between the more French sort of uh, method and the German method of essential oils. But one method says essential oils can and should be used internally, or certain, not every oil, just certain oils for in certain instances. There's another group of aromatherapists that say essential oil should never be used internally for anything. And I'm going to share with you my opinion on this right now. My opinion is essential oils most commonly should be used topically and through 
diffusing them. That's the way my wife and I use them constantly. We use them topically in our skincare. We have essential oils in our deodorant. We use them to sleep at night. We, we rub it on our body if we have burns. So we use them topically. Then we have a diffuser by our bed in, in, in our kitchen, sort of our kitchen and great room to where, hey, we diffuse lavender oil before bed for sleep. We diffuse this blend of things like orange oil and clove and rosemary sort of throughout our house. And, you know, around the holidays and Christmas, we do a blend of cinnamon and orange, which is very holiday-ish. In the spring, we tend to do things like lemongrass and ginger and, uh, and other oils that are very fresh and invigorating. So again, really depending on the time of year, we do different oils. But internal use in certain instances is okay if you have a high quality oil and for certain health problems. And so let's talk about those. So, and by the way, the reason I'm saying this is there are thousands of medical studies, double blind studies on healthy patients or in non healthy patients where they have used essential oils internally lavender oil, peppermint oil, citrus oils. And so I'm going to share the ones that I think people can use internally most frequently. And the ones you want to stay away from here's the, most of the time, if we're talking about things like tree bark, wintergreen oil, cypress oil, certain leaves like eucalyptus, you don't really want to, you, you don't want to use those internally. Okay. It's really not necessary. Um, certain oils though have been used for thousands of years internally. One of those being uh, lemon oil, bergamot oil, the different types of citrus oils. In fact, bitter orange peel or orange oil has been used to support the gallbladder, your lymphatic system, uh, and liver for thousands of years. It's used in ancient Chinese remedies. And so again, citrus oils specifically are known to support your lymphatic system and your gallbladder uh, and really just helping move things throughout your system sort of and how that relates to your immunity. But um, that's one in particular. Now, more isn't better. One to two drops is all you need of most essential oils. And that's a typical dosage. If you're looking at milligrams, anywhere from 20 to 80 milligrams is the typical dosage of an essential oil. And that's typically between one and two drops of an oil. And so I know there was a study recently on lavender oil for insomnia, and they used 60 milligrams, which was the equivalent of one to two drops of lavender oil uh, used uh, in supplement form. So just to say that, just to say, just to sort of give you my perspective on essential oils, should they or shouldn't they be used internally? Most of the time, it's not necessary. Most of the time, you don't need to. But with certain health conditions, they really can be beneficial. Again, supporting fat digestion. In lymphatic drainage, yes, citrus oils are a great supplement for supporting uh, insomnia and trouble sleeping. A single drop of about 60, and, and let's say it, one drop of lavender oil can be good for supporting sleep. Irritable bowel syndrome. Did you know there are multiple studies on peppermint essential oil that it actually helps reduce the symptoms of IBS, that's irritable bowel syndrome, uh, and typically, again, one single drop maybe two. But again, that's, that's sort of it. You, and, and again, doing five, 10 drops, that's not healthy because your liver has to deal with fat in these volatile oils. So if you're doing too many essential oils, most of the time it's going to affect either your liver or your intestines. Okay. That's where it's going to affect it the most uh, in terms of causing any issues there. But again, uh, but again, it's not most oils. Most oils should not be used internally, but there are some in certain instances. And here's the other inter internal sort of debate. People will say, well, essential oils have some different compounds than in foods. They're the same compounds, they're in a higher dosage. So with cinnamon oil in, in particular, you know, there's a study done at Mayo Clinic here not too long ago. And the Mayo Clinic did a study on patients with diabetes, and they found uh, around a certain, a really, really high dose of cinnamon, the equivalent, equivalent of a couple teaspoons a day, was an amazing treatment for diabetes. But the equivalent there of about a teaspoon of cinnamon uh, is going to be maybe about three drops of cinnamon oil. So again, there, because 70% of cinnamon oil, cinnamaldehyde, or, or, or of cinnamon powder, so there's sort of an equivalent there. The cinnamon oil is actually very similar to cinnamon powder. So it really depends on the essential oil. I, I did write a book on this. If you guys are wondering, hey, how do I know which I can take internally, which I can't, and the whole thing, I wrote a book called Essential Oils, Ancient Medicine. 
So again, essential oils, ancient medicine, you can go on amazon.com right now um, and, and buy the book. So again, essential oils, ancient medicine. If you want the full on guide to essential oils, I have, and I actually go over 70 different medical conditions, the top four essential oils for every condition, go through essential oil recipes, go through the usages of each essential oils. It's the most comprehensive book ever written on essential oils. It's called Essential Oils Ancient Medicine. You can find that on Amazon, but that's the book I'd recommend there if, you want, if you're wanting to know more there about those essential oils. Well, I'd love to dive in. I want to talk about the, mo the, the essential oils for certain conditions. And then I want to talk through my sort of top 10 essential oils we should all be using on a regular basis in the big benefits. But let's start off here with essential oils for gut health specifically. So if you want to support your gut and digestive system, most important essential oils are number one is ginger essential oil. Now, ginger oil, my favorite form of it is as a CO2 extract, okay? Now, you can get it as, as a distilled oil, but it might say ginger CO2, but ginger essential oil reduces inflammation and warms your system. Most people with digestive issues have a lot of inflammation, have a lot of dampness, and so, you know, we want to support the, the body and that ginger helps relieve dampness but most importantly, it helps reduce inflammation. So ginger is really, really powerful. Number one essential oil. How should you use it? Diffusing it in a single drop uh, in a recipe like a smoothie, okay? So that's how I use ginger oil. Next one is peppermint oil. Peppermint oil can be rubbed on your stomach. It can be rubbed um, on the bottom of your feet. Also, one single drop in a smoothie and water and something like that can be great as well. Again, I mentioned this earlier, peppermint oil has been shown to reduce symptoms of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. It is so amazing, uh, that essential oil. And peppermint is probably one of the top five essential oils used uh, in North America today. Number three, oil, Roman chamomile oil. This is one you're going to diffuse. It helps reduce stress. One of the biggest causes today of gut issues, whether it be leaky gut syndrome, gas, bloating, um, you know, inflammatory bowel disease, is stress. Roman chamomile not only helps sleep, but it also helps reducing stress, and it's been shown to help calm gut inflammation. So if you buy teas today, let's say you buy an herbal tea that's using herbs to help calm gas bloating, intestinal issues, stomach issues, chamomile is in almost every single one of those blends. So ginger oil, peppermint oil, chamomile oil, number four oil is fennel oil. Fennel is also very calming, uh, very supportive to the digestive system. It's also actually very good for hormones. For women who are looking to increase lactation, uh, and breast milk supply, fennel is also good. So there are many benefits, but it's also good for digestion. So again, for gut health, peppermint, ginger, chamomile oil, for fennel are the most beneficial essential oils for gut health. Let's talk about thyroid health. If you have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's or even Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism, you want to get oils that have adaptogenic properties uh, and support your hormones. Number one oil by far is holy basil essential oil. Holy basil oil uh, is really going to help act as an adaptogen and lower cortisol. That's key. We got to lower cortisol. So number one oil to do that is holy basil oil, also known as Tulsi essential oil. Again, I just recommend diffusing that oil. It's going to be the best way to use it, diffusing it. Mix it with a little coconut oil and rub it right on your thyroid. That's another way to use that oil. Number two oil is myrrh essential oil. Myrrh helps dry up dampness. It also helps with mood and calmness. It's very good. So myrrh oil, diffusing that regularly is great. Um, lemongrass oil. I love this oil because it's anti-inflammatory. It helps with inflammation of the thyroid. So again, a little coconut oil and rubbing uh, lemongrass oil right on your neck. Or if you have skin, just your regular skincare, whatever you're using as a moisturizer, Add you know, one to three drops of lemongrass oil, rub it right there on your thyroid. It's a great oil to diffuse or use topically there as well. And so there's a lot there. I, the other oil I would say though for thyroid is going to be either a lavender or a chamomile. Any oil that's going to reduce that stress, uh, those stress levels and those cortisol levels, which chamomile, Roman chamomile and lavender oil will do that. But I think holy basil, myrrh, lemongrass, 
cam Roman chamomile and lavender are the most beneficial for your thyroid health. And again, mix it with your natural moisturizer, rub it right on the thyroid and diffuse it just throughout your day, whether at your desk at work or at home or in the bedroom, wherever you're at frequently. All right, let's talk about top essential oils to reduce inflammation. Now, we know inflammation today is a root cause of so many diseases, whether it be high cholesterol, whether it be leaky gut syndrome, autoimmune disease, chronic pain. So I want to talk about the top essential oils for chronic pain and inflammation. Number one oil is turmeric essential oil. Now, you can take this as an essential oil or as a CO2 extract, okay? So I take it as a CO2. Um, and there are two compounds in turmeric that make it really powerful. Turmeric has curcumin, which reduces inflammation, and tumorone, which supports stem cell production in your brain and nervous system. And so turmeric oil, take a recommended dose. Sometimes you can get them in capsules today. A lot of times it's straight essential oil. Uh, you can do whatever the recommended dose is, which is typically one to two drops daily. Now, if it's a CO2, it's actually 20 drops. If it's an essential oil, it's two drops. So this is important. You got to read the bottle if it says CO2 or if it doesn't say CO2. CO2, 20 drops. Not CO2, two drops typically of the essential oil of turmeric. But turmeric, the most powerful anti inflammatory essential oil. And if it's the regular essential oil, it has tumorone, which supports stem cell production, which is fantastic. So again, turmeric for inflammation pain. Number two, rosemary essential oil. Rosemary oil contains rosemaric acid and some other really unique compounds which support your brain and reduce inflammation. So again, rosemary oil, I love using this one topically or a single drop internally is great to use with rosemary oil. Next one up, frankincense oil. This is best diffused or a single drop as well internally. But again, frankincense oil um, contains beta pinene. And pinene is really interesting. I don't want to say it's an adaptogen. It's more of this thing that helps modulate and balance your immune system and inflammation reactions, especially if people have food sensitivities, food allergies. They have a system that's overactivated, responding to, to, to things and uh, overreacting, essentially. Frankincense oil is going to be a great oil for those people. So for inflammation, even to a degree with certain types of hypothyroidism, like an autoimmune form like Hashimoto's, but inflammation, autoimmune disease. I really like frankincense oil. All right, let's talk about diabetes and blood sugar. And this is important for energy. If you really want to support and get rid of balanced blood sugar and fight diabetes, the most powerful essential oil is cinnamon essential oil. One single drop internally, you can add it to a smoothie or continue to diffuse it as well as great. But cinnamon oil contains something that's uh, that cinnamaldehyde, which balances something called glucose tolerance factor. So Glucose, what is that sugar? Tolerance, it's, it's, it's sort of balancing, makes your body more tolerable to sugar. So not that you should go and eat a bunch of sugar. If you have diabetes, you need to eat less sugar and get on a diet that's lower in carbohydrates, higher in fat, protein, and fiber. But if you do that, and by the way, another great supplement, if you have diabetes, is something called chromium. But, but chromium and cinnamon are probably the two most powerful oils for diabetes, or sorry, chromium is a mineral, a trace mineral. Uh, cinnamon oil, and then holy basil oil is the next most powerful essential oil for diabetes and blood sugar. So holy basil, cinnamon oil for diabetes, and then lavender oil. There are medical studies showing lavender oil helps fight diabetes and promotes healthy blood sugar levels. All right, next one here, depression. Now, I want to say this. One of the biggest reasons people turn to essential oils is as a natural alternative to synthetic drugs and medications. Now, here's something that's just incredibly powerful to know. Did you know that a good majority, not, I'm not talking about a couple, listen to me on this, hundreds of medications have been created because they found a compound in a plant like an essential oil, and they went and tried to synthetically make that to then use that for treating a condition. Where did the compound that's used for aspirin today come from? Aspirin and painkillers, where'd they come from? Wintergreen essential oil. The compound in wintergreen oil was actually remade chemically, and that's to what today's aspirin is. 
Isn't that crazy? Or, or it was either, it's found in birch and wintergreen. And, and, and this is so true for with so many essential oils is that, so people turn to essential oils to have a natural treatment without all the side effects. Now, aspirin, here's the thing. Using an essential oil and the compounds in essential oils have very little side effects. Now, listen, if you overuse them, they're a powerful form of medicine. So yes, essential oils can have side effects if you overuse them. But in a healthy, normal dosage, you're using it topically or diffusing it, you're, you're, you're 99.999% of the time not going to have those side effects unless you have a use too much on your skin like oregano and you've got a skin reaction. But outside of that, you're not going to have a problem with these oils. But if you're taking aspirin, did you know that aspirin on average kills 16,000 people a year? What? Do you guys hear that? What I said? 16,000 people die a year from aspirin or these medication, these NSAIDs over, over dosage because it causes liver damage and uh, damage to your stomach, bleeding your stomach. So people are hospitalized every single year by the thousands from taking these medications. So a lot of times people turn to essential oils or herbs and plants in general. You know, when people opened up medicine cabinets thousands of years ago, they found essential oil. That's what medicine was. If you went to an ancient, they called it an apothecary. You went to an apothecary in China, in India, in the Middle East, in an area like Israel, in Greece, in Europe. You went to an apothecary and you'd say, I've got digestive issues. They would give you an herbal blend of something like chamomile and ginger and astragalus. They'd have you go home, make it as a tea and take it that way, or they'd give you an essential oil in certain areas of the world and that's what you'd use. That's what you would use when you were sick. You know, I think about this even back to, as we're hearing like, think like King Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived. It's referenced in, in the ancient Proverbs that Solomon, uh, he, he used essential oils. It talks about cedar wood. It talks about aloes, which is actually sandalwood. It talks about all these different things. So when you open up his medicine cabinet, one of the wisest men that ever lived, it was loaded with essential oils. So all that being said, this next condition, depression, depression and anxiety are, two, are the two medical conditions that probably have the largest amount of prescription drugs uh, that the people take for, okay? Depression and anxiety. And th I think in terms of the top 10 medications that people take today, I think three of the top 10 are antidepressants and anti-anxiety drugs. So that being said, there are some essential oils that are really beneficial for depression and anxiety. Let's talk about depression. Number one, lavender oil. Lavender oil, I mentioned earlier the study done for patients going in for surgery for anxiety, lavender oil was used. For depression, lavender oil has been used in medical studies. Another uh, study uh, found bergamot and citrus oils. I mentioned earlier neroli, but bergamot and orange peel, these oils have been shown to uplift your mood. Another, actually probably my favorite oil for uplifting, uplifting the mood, it's called Ylang Ylang. That's spelled Y-L-A-N-G, Y-L-A-N-G. Okay, it's too, Ylang Ylang. And so um, that's an oil that's used to really uplift the mood. So using lavender, citrus oils like bergamot and lemon, Ylang Ylang, these oils have been shown in medical studies, both on animals and in humans, both. Here's another powerful study on PTSD, that's post-traumatic stress disorder, lavender essential oil was shown to be an effective medical treatment. So again, it, it, these essential oils are powerful for so many things. Let me go into a few more conditions here. Brain health, children or adults with ADHD. Now I'm going to be vulnerable and share this with you guys. I, as a kid, was diagnosed with ADHD. And for a week, I got put on a drug called Adderall. I started taking the drug, and after a week, actually, it was, wasn't a full week, it was three days. I literally felt kind of like a zombie. Like, I could tell, like, my personality, I, I, I was, it was affecting me so greatly. And that's about the time soon after where I started looking into natural things. I started changing my diet, and all of a sudden, it was amazing. I could focus, really, for the first time ever, because I got the sugar out of my diet. I started getting healthy fats. I started taking some healthy supplements, like fish oil and B vitamins and probiotics. And, and amazingly, I could, stu I could focus. But there are so many people today who are taking drugs for focus like Adderall and Ritalin for ADHD and ADD. I was one of those kids, I can tell you, I took the drug. It, it really affected my mood and personality. Instead, then we turned to natural remedies and diet. And it was incredible, my ability then to focus and study. So if you are looking to 
help ADHD. Here are the best essential oils. Number one, vetiver oil. Vetiver. It's an oil you can use a little bit topically, uh, diffusing it regularly, but that's a great oil. In fact, I know a college professor who made a blend and diffused it during, for his students during classroom time and especially during tests. Vetiver oil, number one. Number two, cedarwood oil. Now, cedarwood, I mentioned King Solomon, who was known as one of the wisest people to ever live, one of the wealthiest people as well. He used cedarwood. That's one of the things he references in connection with wisdom and great thinking and that sort of thing. So vetiver and cedarwood. Some of these essential oils too, have you guys ever heard of, there are certain music and rhythms that help you get into a certain, uh, you have different brain waves. So you may be aware of this, when you sleep, your body gets into something called delta waves, okay? It's a very deep, you get into a very deep sleep, that's delta waves. Calming state, if you're kind of like getting a massage or meditating and just really relaxed, those are theta waves. And then you also have higher brain waves, things like alpha and others, where you're really able to focus and concentrate. But now, by the way, theta waves, have you ever gone to the beach and just heard the sound of just crashing waves and you're, you can tell your spirit is calm? Have you ever gone for a walk out in nature and you hear the animals sort of making noises? Or have you ever just heard the sound of rain? It almost made you kind of drowsy and that puts you in a, in a state of what's called theta, okay? Theta, it actually changes your, your, your brain waves, okay? By the way, there are thousands of medical studies on what I'm talking about, on uh, brain waves and how they're, uh, you know, for different states and for sleep and that sort of thing. So, um, but as we're talking about these theta waves, essential oils have different frequencies uh, and actually support your body getting into a certain state. So vetiver cedarwood, rosemary, and peppermint oil. These are oils that sort of get your brain, and think about vetiver, cedarwood, rosemary, pine. These are oils, they're all from the same family. They're from a pine family, pine, bird. They're, they're, you know, vetiver is actually more of a grass, but they all have this similar sort of uh, invigorating, is the word I'm gonna use, more of an invigorating smell. Um, invigorating and calming at the same time. That's what you want. You want to have focus and concentration and be invigorated. Uh, and, and so these essential oils medically have been shown to be the best for brain health and for ADHD. I'll throw lavender oil in there as well, but vetiver, cedarwood, rosemary, lavender oil are all great for brain health, focus, and concentration there. So those are some of the best essential oils. I want to mention candida. If you have candida, I think cinnamon oil, and holy basil oil are going to be the most effective there along with ginger. All right, so let's talk about the best essential oils to use during pregnancy. And this is according to, uh, you know, aromatherapists who have who've studied essential oils for, um, for as a career, what they believe to be are some of the safest or what are the safe essential oils to use during pregnancy. So I'm going to share one. If you have anxiety, um, and by the way, I don't recommend any essential oils internally typically during pregnancy. Um, this is just diffusing them in the air most commonly, what is best. So um, one is if you're taking a, th this is great for anxiety. If you're having anxiety, a little bit of ylang-ylang and lavender oil. If you have breast tenderness, a little bit of lavender oil rubbed on the area uh, can be good as well. If you've got congestion, lemon oil and bergamot oil are typically the most beneficial to use there as well. If you're struggling with a headache, a little bit of lavender oil on your neck and temples is the best thing to do there. High blood pressure, lavender essential oil, insomnia lavender oil, um, and stretch marks, lavender oil, sandalwood oil, some swelling lavender oil. It, you're you're going to find the theme here is lavender oil and citrus oils. Those tend to be the safest during pregnancy. Now, if you want the full list here, of, of what I cover. And, and listen, these are best for pregnancy discomforts. There's some oils that are then can be used that are better during labor, but during pregnancy, frankincense oil, ginger, lavender, lemon, orange, ylang ylang, sandalwood, and Roman chamomile. Those are the most effective and safe essential oils to use during pregnancy. And again, you can find those in my book, Essential Oils, Ancient Medicine. There's also some great ones for pets. In fact, we give our pets and both of our dogs turmeric essential oil, and sometimes we use a little bit of lavender oil with them as well. So again, we use, you know, some of these, there, there's some you don't want to use with pets. You don't want to use clove, oregano, tea tree, thyme, wintergreen, birch. Uh, but again, we use lavender oil 
and rosemary and frankincense. So lavender, rosemary, and frankincense the most commonly with our pets there as well. All right, so let's talk about the top essential oils and their uses. I'm gonna go through my top 15 here quickly. Number one, clove oil. Clove oil is great for fighting parasites and fighting viruses, and it's really high in antioxidants. So if you have a parasite, if you have an infection, clove oil has really powerful antimicrobial properties, but it's number one benefit is for your dental health. If you wanna get rid of gingivitis plaque and have fresh breath, mix a drop of clove oil or a few drops of clove oil with coconut oil, do oil pulling, swish it around in your mouth for five minutes, spit it out, but it's powerful for your dental health. Cypress oil is the best essential oil for healing broken bones. If you have broken bones, rub cypress oil, on the area because it improves circulation. It's also great for varicose veins. For respiratory infections, I recommend eucalyptus essential oil. For bronchitis, sinusitis, allergies, it helps purify the body. Frankincense oil is my favorite oil for boosting your immune system, re helping reduce inflammation. It's also great for getting rid of age spots. If you have age spots on your skin, mix frankincense oil with your natural skin care and rub it on the area. Also, frankincense may help fight cancer. Ginger essential oil reduces inflammation and supports digestion. It helps with nausea. Now, when my wife, Chelsea, uh, was pregnant, um, she used ginger oil, or as she is pregnant, actually currently right now, uh, she's into, her nausea is gone in, in, in the, um, where she's at now, but uh, she used ginger and peppermint oil together for her nausea. Okay, it's a great one-two punch there. Grapefruit oil for cellulite metabolism. You can do one drop internally. You can rub it uh, with coconut oil in an area if you have cellulite. Uh, number seven, lavender oil, the best for relaxation, for mood, and healing burns and cuts and scrapes. Number eight, lemon oil. And by the way, essential oils are great for detoxing your home and body. So Chelsea and I, we made a mix of uh, a little bit of vinegar, water, and then we use lemon oil and either tea tree oil or clove. And that's what we spray down our countertops with. It's what we spray in our shower. It's what we use for household cleaning. So those, you know, and you know how many people today have chemicals in their shampoo, chemicals in their toothpaste, chemicals in their skincare routine. So all the products we use, my wife and I, we use essential oils in those products naturally or we add them to our products and make our own. And that's why these essential oils are so great. Myrrh essential oil, probably the most powerful for healing skin. So I mentioned if you've got age spots or skin issues, myrrh and frankincense together, along with you know whatever other oil or natural skincare thing you're going to use, whether it be an aloe-based skincare or jojoba or coconut oil. But again, myrrh is great for inflammation of the skin. It's number one benefits fighting cancer, and it's also great for getting rid of infections or candida, really powerful for candida. Oregano oil, great for helping you get rid of a cold fast, also effective against candida. By the way, there's several medical studies on oregano essential oil and its benefits for candida. Peppermint oil, great for energy, for digestion, for headaches, for muscle pain relief. In fact, if you've got a headache, peppermint and lavender oil together as a combo the best combo out there. Rose oil is great for, if somebody has red or inflamed skin, whether it be rosacea or something else, rose oil is great. Rosemary essential oil, great for the brain and for memory. If you wanna do a better job studying and memorizing things and in reading, diffusing rosemary oil is great for brain inflammation and function. Tea tree oil, also known as melaleuca, is a great natural household cleaner. Again, mix it with some water and lemon oil and vinegar. Use it to spray down your house. And sandalwood oil is a natural aphrodisiac and used to improve libido. So sandalwood, it's also great, a great natural deodorant or a perfume or a uh, cologne for both men and women. It's more of a gender neutral scent. Just smells really great. So I'll actually make my own homemade deodorant using sandalwood oil and like black pepper oil. And so anyways, it's, it's a great, uh, you know, great thing to use together. So I mentioned this earlier. Again, essential oils can be used topically, aromatically. A few oils can be used internally, typically just one to two drops. And they're great to use in your personal care products there. My favorite carrier oils is typically coconut oil, 
slash MCT oil. That's how we use them in the Axe household. And again, there are just so many things. Natural bug spray, the natural bug spray we use in the summers uh, is a mixture of like lemongrass oil and eucalyptus and in clove oil. Um, and I think, listen, I think the oils I went through, some of them you should just always have on hand in your medicine cabinet. If you or your kids get a burn or a cut, the first thing you do, should do is put lavender oil on those. Um, I got stung by a jellyfish last year. I did a blend of, I made a paste of baking soda um, along with apple cider vinegar. And then afterwards I put lavender oil on it as well. You know, peppermint oil is great for, hey, if somebody's got a headache or an upset tummy or stomach, you know, at home, whether it's you or your kids, you got a cold or flu, oregano oil. Um, so again, we having essential oils on hand as part of your natural holistic medicine cabinet, I think it's something all of us should have uh, all of the time. And hey, I want to encourage you guys, if you loved this episode, do me a big favor, go on to iTunes right now and let me know what you think about the show, Okay. Uh, I'd love a five-star review if you can go on there. And the reason why it's so beneficial, you know, there are millions of people out there that don't know how to use food as medicine. They don't know the benefits of essential oils. And if people can then go and listen to this podcast and actually hear the truth of, of how to heal their bodies naturally, that there is a natural way, then, then you're going to be really partnering with me on mission to help save and transform lives. You know, my parents and my family did not know the truth of healthcare growing up because of it. My mom had a cancer diagnosis twice. We were sick all the time. And when I started learning these things, it really set me free. I'm healthier than I've ever been. And I want to help families with that. So I want to say thank you to all of you who are going on iTunes there and, uh, and who are giving me a, a, a review. And also thanks to all of you guys who are getting that new book, Essential Oils, Ancient Medicine. And we'll say, hey, I'll be back next week with another podcast. Thanks for listening, everybody. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.